welcome to the weekly update. You're going to notice this week that the format's going to change just a little bit. Uh, I mentioned a few weeks ago that we wanted to make this a little bit better for you and a little bit more well-rounded video. So, uh, the first thing that hopefully you've noticed, or maybe not, is that there's no commercials. We pulled the commercials from off of the video so that you can just take a clean watch through um, without having to be interrupted, because I know I hate that too. Uh, so, commercials are gone. That's number one. Number two, we're going to try to have tank tech tip videos. Tank tip videos. Tank tip videos in the actual video itself. Uh, we're going to breeze through freshwater fish, saltwater fish, the news, and the desirables. And uh, we're also going to try to have a blooper reel at the very end uh, rather than to do a full segment of the grind uh, that doesn't get watched as much as it used to. So, all of that will be compacted into the weekly update. So, Let's get started. One thing I want to mention before we get going are the new Ultra Clear uh, UV sterilizers that we got for ponds. Uh, we've been out of pond UV sterilizers for a little while. If you want to clear up green water in a pond, this is the way to do it. Of all the pond UVs I've sold for 30 years, I've never had anyone bring one back um, because it didn't work and it didn't do the job it was supposed to. Easiest way to get green water uh, out of your pond is with a UV sterilizer and these are new ones from Aquascape that just came in. Uh, the Ultra Clear 1000 which of course will do a 1000 gallon pond uh, and the 5000 which will do a five up to a 5000 gallon pond. If you have a pond and you're questioning hey I don't know how big my pond is uh, there's a very simple method for that. Uh, all you need to do is times the inches in length times width times the depth of your pond divided by 231 and that will give you a pretty accurate gallonage of how big your pond is. Uh, I get asked that all the time and most people that come in here have no idea how big their pond is. That is a very easy way to figure that out. Hi, it's Kevin. I got fish from two different vendors this week. I got some really nice looking stuff in this morning. I'm here to show you the highlights, the best of the best of what we got in. Two of the best looking things I got in are two of my favorite fish. The gold gourami, those are ones that I have not been able to get much lately because of COVID actually, because they're an Asian import. And the ones I've been able to get were extremely tiny. These came in nice and medium size for a change at a good reasonable price. I was excited to get them back in. And I've also got some gold neon rosy barbs. Now these are stellar specimens of this fish. They're big and fat and brightly colored. They make a great addition. They could go with large community fish or semi-aggressive fish with no problem. This is a really cool, unique fish. I have not seen these before. These are Tonellus catfish. They come from South America. A very good addition to large community or a semi-aggressive community tank. These guys rarely get over three inches. This is my favorite kind of gourami. These are the pearl gouramis. The males are a lot more colorful than the females and have a much longer dorsal fin. These are one of my all time favorite gouramis. They are generally a little more peaceful than some of the other larger gouramis. They can get up to about six inches though. So do be prepared to accommodate for size. They usually do best singularly kept or in groups of three or more. We got in some really nice colorful sword tails. This is one of my favorite live bearers. I got in a decent amount of males for a change too. The males are the ones that actually have the sword on the tail. I got in some marigold wags and I also got in just like an assorted batch of the Mickey Mouse. This is a fish we have not been able to get in almost since COVID hit actually. These are penguin tetras. Really cool shoaling fish but do really well in a decent sized tank actually. I think they would do better if they were in a larger tank than a smaller tank. Preferably at least a 20 gallon, preferably like a 30 or a 40. Got in some awesome looking dolphin morais in. These guys on the males, will they'll get like a defined hump on the head. Really cool fish. One I haven't been able to get in in quite some time. Also, their tank mates in here, another one of my all time favorite. These are the barley eyes. These guys as they mature the males will look almost like a peacock in body shape and finage. They'll get brilliant blue and bright reddish orange on the tips of the fins. 
the females are still pretty colorful as well, even when they get larger. Really cool fish, and they also will survive really well with a peacock tank. Really cool catfish compatible with your African cichlids. The Cynodonus petrocolas. These are hiding. kind of big. Yeah, they're kind of hiding. They're big for petrocolas. Petrocolas are a lot smaller than most other Cynodonus. They usually don't top out much more than four inches full size. We did get in some nice looking coolie loaches. These guys aren't the biggest, but they are nice and healthy looking. This is a delicate little fish. Does well in a community tank. Likes to burrow down in your substrate. We got in some nice, good size Siamese flying fox. These are Siamese algae eaters. These are prized for plant tanks heavily because they do a good job cleaning up. I noticed when I went to the Georgia Aquarium last, this is the, what they were using at the Georgia Aquarium for pretty much all of the algae control and all of their planted tanks. I got in some awesome looking curviceps. These are a dwarf cichlid that does really well in a semi-aggressive tank. Really good tank mates would be barbs and the such. These guys don't usually get larger than three inches. Really cool colorful little guys. I did an order from Florida and got in some nice large size fire mouth cichlids. These are one of my favorites. They are pretty aggressive so be very careful choosing tank mates. They generally don't get over six inches max on this particular fish and these guys are topping out at probably about four inches. I got in some really nice looking Florida gar. These guys are really good size specimens. I prefer this size personally. They're not, they're, I would say they're probably about eight inches or so. But these guys will get about 24 inches or so in captivity. Really probably the best suited gar for captivity, but will still require quite a large tank. So fish nutrition, let's talk about that in your tank tips for this week. Uh, whether it's fresh water or salt water, one of the most important things about your aquarium other than the water quality is the nutrition is what you put in the fish as well as what the fish swims in and I always recommend at least three different types of food um, a pelleted food uh, because of just how it is how it sinks how accessible it is to the fish itself um, a flake food which replicates many of the types of algaes and things like that that fish find in the wild um, and a frozen food uh, I've just grabbed three random foods, but breaking things up into multiple different types of food give the fish an option of getting multiple types of nutrients. Uh, fish in the wild feed constantly and they feed on many, many different things. It's hard to replicate that with any one type of food. So it is always best, whether you're feeding freshwater or a specific freshwater fish, saltwater or specific saltwater fish, to vary the diet as much as possible. One of the things I'm often asked is, well, how much? And we've always used a rule here of about one minute, um, or I usually use the rule of pretend like the stomach is the size of the fish's eye. Uh, if you can keep to this, you're gonna typically feed them no more or less than what they would typically eat in any type of feeding session that that fish would have. Uh, it's a pretty good average, especially if you're new to the hobby. If you've done this for a long time, there are other ways to feed your fish. As long as you're not creating more of a wasteful situation by letting food decay in the tank. Uh, but one of the other things that's incredibly important and nobody ever tells anybody is vitamins. Um, putting vitamins back into the food source so that the fish can absorb these to fight against bacterial infections. Vitamins also help to color up the fish. Uh, this is one in particular, but we stock three different vitamins here at Fishy Business. Now you know, don't need three different vitamins to feed your fish. You only need one vitamin. But by putting that back into the fish, you're actually bolstering the immune system of that particular fish and creating a situation where hopefully it has a better chance of survival in your tank. Wait a minute, what's going on? I'm, 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 I'm doing the, I'm, I'm doing the salt water this week. Yeah, I'm doing the salt water this week. I just realized that. Okay, let's start. 
Okay, this is a Melanuris RAS. It's a really cool Melanuris RAS for a couple of reasons. One, because it came out of a customer's tank, which is always the best way to buy most fish if you have the opportunity, because you're gonna get a proven fish that's already come out of the wild, gone into someone's tank, and done very well. So I haven't even got the name on it yet, but if you want a drop-dead gorgeous Melanuris RAS, this is one to have gets shown anytime we get one in, but there's a reason for it. Uh, Bellastoides conspiculum, or the clown trigger fish, is one of the coolest fish in the ocean. If you have an aggressive tank or you have a fish-only tank with larger bodied fish, this is a showstopper. Not only is it a hardy species of trigger, but it is a very personable species of trigger. And one of the oldest fish that I have in service is a clown trigger. So great fish, morphs into a few different colors over its lifespan, but long-lived, hardy, and gorgeous. In keeping with beautiful fish that go in a good fish-only system, uh, this is Thalassoma lunare, or the lunar wrasse. Uh, this is one of the hardiest species of fish that we sell. It is aggressive. Um, it is a meat-eating, large-bodied wrasse, but uh, it can be compatible with a lot of larger bodied fish. So if you have a fish only system, this is a very busy fish that stays out there, hardy and long lived, and a green, pink, blue, all the colors of the rainbow are in this fish. It is a wonderful fish that is not very expensive for what you get. So if you have a nano tank or a small tank or a bio cube, one of my favorite fish, both for its color its uh, longevity is the six line wrasse. Uh, very small, still will get a little bit bigger than this, uh, but very compatible with a lot of different species of fish, lots of different color. Uh, again, pinks, greens, blues, all in a small fish that's under 50 bucks. Okay, next up, uh, Hayden's Vlamingi Tang. Uh, we're gonna, no we're not, just kidding Hayden. Don't touch my reef tanks. Actually, it's this flamingy tank, the one that just disappeared behind the rock that I'm gonna have to put my hand in the tank and move so you can see. Uh, one of the best fish in salt water. Uh, we don't have them very often, which is why I don't harp on them very often, but this is a beautiful, beautiful tang. As you can see, the larger one that we just showed with Hayden. This guy, this little guy just came in. Uh, blue lips, blue spots, and everything. This is a very long-lived fish. It's very compatible with a lot of different types of fish. It is reef safe, uh, but it does get big. And you can see swimming around with it the Tamini Tang. Uh, this is another fish I love. It's one of my top fish uh, that I use in service. Apparently it's Tang Central because the little blue Hippotus Tang is coming out now too. Uh, all of these are great fish for a reef aquarium. They're also good in terms of their compatibility with other fish. All have different requirements as far as what you need to have and how they do in a tank, but these are great fish. Okay, I love shrimp. And that's, there's a lot of reasons for that. One, because they can be very entertaining in a tank. One, because they can be very beneficial in terms of parasite removal, in terms of just in general cleaning. And these cleaner shrimp and blood shrimp are perfect for that. You can see this little guy, Lysmida debilius. It comes from the Indian Ocean. This is a beautiful, beautiful shrimp. Uh, looks like somebody just took a nice Cabernet and poured it over a white shrimp and it got a couple spots and it's just super, super cool. Uh, these are great, they're hardy. Um, they will do good in any tank except a predatory one. Um, so if you've got a reef tank and you don't have shrimp, get some shrimp. Every week I think we get uh, requests about getting Royal Gramas in. And in the last couple of years, the Royal Gramas that you see in the hobby are really hit and miss in terms of their hardiness. And if you want a fish that has very, very similar markings, uh, this guy is for you. It's the bicolor Pseudochromus or Dottie Back. Uh, same temperament, same size, same color pattern. The only difference is the Royal Gramas colors tend to bleed together whereas the bicolor has a very straight line separating the fuchsia from the yellow. Uh, but this is a much hardier version of the two fish. So if you've been in the market for a Royal Grama, consider the bicolor Pseudochromus. Uh, I think you'll get a lot more out of that particular fish. 
Paracanthus hepatis. This is probably one of the most striking examples of a regal blue tang that we have had in quite some time. Now he's a little skittish because he just came in, but the weight on this fish, the actual girth of this fish, and the size could not be more perfect. So while he's going to be a little hesitant to come out and visit everybody, I'm going to put his rock back in there for a minute so he can feel a little bit more safe. Um, this is going to be a very, very good specimen long term. Uh, the hardiness of this fish can vary, but I can tell you if you want a specimen that's going to have a great chance, uh, that's not too expensive, this is a great fish. So one more thing real quick, if you're watching this, you're probably seeing this on a Thursday, if you're watching it as it comes out, uh, tomorrow, that is Friday, uh, we will be having another shipment of saltwater fish coming in, a much bigger shipment than we've gotten so far this week. So definitely pay attention to that, pay attention to Facebook for updates on the saltwater fish, there's a lot more heading your way. I hope a little bit of a tank tip. Uh, has helped. I hope that you've seen some fish. You wait a minute. Did we forget something, Cat? Ah, bloopers. Okay, so the tank tip for this week: fish nutrition one on one. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, so the tank tip for this week is. Fish nutrition no one. I'm gonna try this one more time. Okay, your tank tip for the week. Why am I drawing a blank when I get ready to say it? Okay, so. Okay. Tank tip, fish nutrition. These are some of my favorite African cichlids that there are out there. These are the Hatmorais. These guys are also called dolphin more. <laughs> are you wine shopping at work? No. What are you shopping for? I'm price comparing. <laughs> so you are wine shopping at work? No. <laughs> Your new phone. <laughs> I'm wine shopping at work now? No. <laughs> oh, it was on in your back pocket the whole time. Free to good home. Free. With the bucket. Just take it. Please. The second ugliest gravel we've ever had here in the fishing place. <laughs>